Good morning, everybody. It's the OK Grognard Show, Friday, May 1st, 2020. And it's new time, 9.30 a.m. Central Time in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Today we're going to do a little convention report. It's the 1st of May, and Cobalt Con is starting up today. We're also going to be talking about Con of Champions, where I'll be running some games. And uh, if we get anybody popping in the chat that wishes to discuss some other potential conventions, we'll do that as well. Otherwise, we'll focus on those two and maybe bring some of the others up in future shows. You know, Gen Con news, things like that. Quick enough to talk about late May happenings with Con of Champions. This is my GM is schedule for that day. You'll note the symmetry between Saturday and Monday. That is, in essence, a first, a third, and a fifth level game using first edition rules on each day at 11, 2, and 6 with an idea that the 6 o'clock games can run a little bit late if people are amenable and it happens to go that way. There is room to run the 3rd edition or the 3rd uh, level 1st edition games a little bit later but I'm going to want to break grab a little dinner I'm sure. The 1st uh, level games kind of mirror each other as do the third level games and the fifth level games. They have similar titles, that is by design. The idea that it is that I'll be using the same assets for the parallel games, though they won't necessarily be run the same way. I may or may not have some different pregens for each one. Uh, I do intend in a column first, third, and fifth to have pre-generated characters that are ostensibly uh, ostensibly a uh, character that has progressed from first to third and then to fifth so that if somebody wants to play in all three or play in a later one they can be playing the same character if they get there in time and make that choice. Obviously if we have somebody who's played let's say the fighter character in the first one and somebody who played him in the third one and they both come to the fifth level one then they'll have to roll off or we'll figure out some way of doing that at that time. And since they'll be naming them I suppose it would be okay to just have two of that class. Yeah, maybe that's the way we'll go. That sounds reasonable enough. Anyway, it'll be a different different run of games on Monday than from Saturday. They won't be identical. So if somebody wanted to sign up with the Monday games and the Saturday games both included in their schedule, or one from each, then... Uh, that won't be hurting them. I wanted to get up to 20 hours. So we, since each of these were three-hour games, I had a uh, two-hour game on the schedule, a board game on Sunday. Sunday is going to be mainly about me relaxing and playing. And since I can play in the board game, and that's the board game I've played the most on Tabletopia, and I'm sure sure they pronounce it Tabletopia, but I still call it Tabletopia, because there's only one P. Anyway, since that's the game I've played the most on there, I thought that would be the best one to run. It's a two-hour slot. Not sure if I'm going to have something butting up against the end of it, but we may have to end it at some point, slightly unfinished, just to honor the time slot, which is okay. It's good to put a clock on these things. As we know, some of these board games, if they aren't 
kept to a certain pace can drag on and on and on and squeeze all the fun out of them. And we don't game to not have fun. So, fair warning. The, uh, the other thing that begins today, and honestly, I didn't know if I was going to be able to work it into my schedule, so I dragged my feet on joining in. But, of course, I'm talking about Cobalt Con, which uh, happens today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Uh, I just signed up this morning. It was a last-minute decision. I figured I'd be free, but I wasn't sure, so I didn't sign up in advance. I didn't set up to run any games, not so much because of the scheduling, but because I was concerned that I would be proficient enough using the technology to run online games for a convention. I'm pleased enough at this point with my skills that running games for Con of Champions later in the month is going to be fine, but I did not sign up to uh, run any games for Cobalt Con. It's only $5 to sign up and play all weekend. So this morning I signed up and looked over the schedule. Most of what I jumped in on are seminars, as you can see. I did get the last seat in a uh, first edition game with Joe. And I got a seat in a first edition game on Sunday with Paul, which is very good for me because uh, it'll be fun to be on the other side of the screen in a first edition game. It's what I prefer playing the most when I do play. I don't mind playing BX or 5th edition or 3rd edition, 3.5, Pathfinder, 2nd edition, any of the basics, really. Original D&D. I, I love playing all of that. Um, I'll even play 4th if it comes up. I like a good tactical oriented combat and I think uh, fourth does that incredibly well so I'm happy to do that too but if I can sign up for a first edition game get in on it that's probably when I'm happiest OD and D would probably be a close second followed by any of the basics they all play fairly close to one another Notice some of the other things, uh, and again, this is all happening today, starting today, in another less than an hour and a half, I'll be jumping in on this. In fact, you know, there's a good question. I'm going to pull that up over here, because these times might not be central time. Mountain time. Okay. So, mountain time is central time, right? Let's find out. <clears throat> uh, Chicago time versus mountain time. We'll just do a little search in the Google search here. Okay. So, if we're on Chicago time, 11 a.m. my time, it's 10 a.m. Mm -mm -mm. So 11 a.m. Mountain Time is 12 p.m. 12 p.m. my time. So despite what it shows my schedule to be here, These times will be one hour later. So this will start at noon today. And that's fine. This is not going to change my life. 
significantly. Uh, it just means I have a little more time to prepare for it. So we've got this. Then we've got Trick to the Trade with Stephen Chenault. That'll be a fun little hour and a half of listening some ideas, perhaps sharing some if he's asking people who are part of the group to jump in. Later, a uh, Q&A with Tim Kask. Always fun hearing his stories. Joe from the game earlier will be having a little design Q&A later, which will be interesting. I can ask him some questions about some choices he made for the adventure he ran earlier in the day. Now, I've always pronounced this Alyssa Fed, and I've heard Elisa, and maybe I've always pronounced it wrong. I'm going to find out today, because I'm tired of not knowing. I'm going to directly ask. Anyway, I love her mapping. Cave Geek Art, I know that they are on the billing with her, so we'll see how that's divvied up. Bill. Bill's running a little hour-long seminar about episodic adventures and table storytelling. I've shortened it just to fit in the box on this schedule here, but I wanted to make sure his name was in there so people would know that he's the one running it when I show up my schedule on here. Remember, all of these are an hour later, so that's really 4 o'clock central time. Uh, hour later relative to me and Lake Geneva time. Let's make a map. I'm unfamiliar with this cartographer. It'll be fun sitting in on this and assisting, maybe throwing out some ideas and seeing how a uh, map design comes together with this person's style. It's always fun to see different styles. Paul Burdick is running a first edition game that he created back in 1984, if I recall him saying that correctly. If I go here and go to my schedule, I thought it was a really interesting. Now, there's some seats left, so he, he entered this late, and there are seats available, but listen to this. Come play with the author. In 1984, I wrote and self-published a first edition AD&D adventure. In your swill-headed tavern braggadocio, you have committed to rid the countryside of the evil oppressor known only as Thrax. On the following morning, you wake up hungover and make the trek to the castle. Castle Thrax. It stands like an upraised sword whose shadow falls on the innocent town some leagues below. Bring your favorite 7th level character, or 7 combined levels if multi or dual, to meet the challenge we will play on Zoom with your dice rolls and mine. So there's a refreshing DM trusts individuals with dice rolls. AD&D 1st Edition. All on Zoom. That's all good. More information is over here. Looks like a second person has signed up. Perhaps they signed up already. Looks like I was the second person who signed up. Well, this is his introduction. Well, wait a minute. This is four hours and 39 minutes. We're not going to watch this whole thing. However, we can certainly check out some of it. So, Aaron and Ken, if I could get your character names. Michael Mirth. My character is Thornton Mendelson. And Aaron that's spelled like Thornton. This was run Got April it. 13th. Okay, and how Oops. many hit points do you have? Like it was uh, done on Zoom also? Uh, honestly, I was just about to start rolling, but uh, multi-class, I got to like roll the D10 and the D6 and then divide by two, I think. Yeah, take half of each. <clears throat> Um, that's exactly what now I was notice, start 
Uh, but okay. I, Paul Burdick. I don't know if this is a okay, pseudonym. Okay, like 50. Just tooling around here. Return to Cancel Threx. So three days ago, he ran it again. Well, let's see. Uh, 15. Okay. Uh, let's subscribe. 15 and 18. Max would be 33. We're going to come back and... Nope, no, nope, your fourth level. Please, watch this Max. later. Yes. 36. All right. Maybe sometime before Sunday I can watch a little bit of that. On the other hand, spoilers, right? Maybe I should be careful and not watch any of that. We don't want to ruin any of it for myself or for others. So maybe it would be best to just leave it be until after the weekend. Or maybe Sunday night. We'll see. Anyway, at least I know it exists. It could well be fun. He does point to it for more information. So maybe it's not spoiler laden. But we will see. Now, I haven't used Zoom since... Since GaryCon. In the wake of... Gary Khan, there was some discussion, some uh, security issues that came out um, about Zoom and about sharing links and how they were encoded uh, for security purposes and how it was uh, a simple enough task for certain hackers to break that encoding and thereby gain some information about how to access your own desktop. Now, I wasn't sharing anything through Zoom. I was just there um, watching seminars, so it wasn't really an issue for me. Um, it may also be that someone needs to be in the room at the time when you do that sharing. And maybe that became more um, more prevalent post that time because that didn't come out until a week later. But I did steer clear of it and have steered clear of it since then. So uh, it was it's with just some minor trepidation that I join in on this game that's being run on Zoom. We're bringing our own characters. Um, I won't share a link to it anywhere. Um, I may just show a picture of it and leave it at that. We will see. But in some way, I'm going to have to bring a character, right? So... Uh, I've got a number of old character sheets lying around first edition that fit more or less seventh level or combined so that shouldn't be a problem now we should take a quick look at some of the other things that are happening with Cobalt Con let's have a look at this one you know, see how the formatting doesn't fit the entire which is why I redid some of this to make sure that everything, all the information I wanted to share was available. Um, checking this out. Cave Geek Art. What's the... Lisa? Fadden. Bring their maps to you at the same time on this virtual paper. Good uh, notes. Yeah, yeah, that's what it says. Join us on Twitch. And tell us what you want to see on the map. We both draw it at the same time. We will discuss games, maps, techniques. General, generally wrestle with the software as we map off. Yeah, okay. This is going to be pretty cool then. So we're, I don't know. They're probably going to do like a split screen sort of thing. Uh, notice the mapper from later in the day that we talk about the other cartographer is in on this. Uh, sitting in as an attendee. Uh, the Glazers are there. Damn it, Jennifer. 
and um, some other fellows. Oh, I recognize some of these names. So, last time we drew Pirate Island. <laughs> yeah, spelling is correct to tell you plenty. So, probably an island shaped like an eye or with some aspects that are bring a, bring the uh, evoke the uh, image of an eye or the theme of an eye. So we'll see what they do with this one, but it'll be kind of neat to watch two cartographers go at it in real time, creating maps based on whose map is it anyway? Based on suggestions from the audience. So that'll be fun. What else do we got here? Uh, we'll take a quick look at Joe's game. Remembering that Joseph, uh, his game is sold out at this point. No tickets available. Tucker's Cobalt didn't seem hard enough for us. Characters are hired to rid the village of a Cobalt problem, but run into something unexpected for four to six characters of 16th level. Pre-gens will be supplied if needed. Oh you know, yeah, I'll take a pre-gen for that. Though players may submit their own characters for pre-approval. Well, I didn't submit one anyway, so I would need to pray, Jen. This is literally an exclusive event for Virtual Cobalt Con 2020. We feel it would be missed opportunity not to run our own version of Tucker's Cobalts at our first Cobalt Con. Good call, Joseph. Very good. This adventure is designed to show off just how lethal we can be in designing. So these are Cobalts. And these are 16th level characters going up against them, and there'll be six of them. The adventure will be run through our discard server. Very good. We will send invites to all attendees to communicate on characters and talk gaming in general before and during the con. All die rolls will be on the honor system. No trouble there. Four hours. 11 a.m. We know it's noon, actually. All on Discord. Here's the rest of the group. And once again, a couple of these names are familiar, so it'd be good to play with some other first edition aficionados. We'll take a look at the rest of the schedule while we're here. We've got time. We just bought an extra hour once we figured out the time zone thing, right? <laughs> here we go. Over to Game Master Tricks of the Trade with Stephen Chanel. He is the host, of course. This will... Which will amphitheater, blah, blah, blah. Discord, okay. This will happen on his on the uh, Troll Lords Discord channel, I believe. Do a quick check here. Yep. Been there before, so... We've got that set up for later. Who do we got here? Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Good folk. I know quite a few of these people. Excellent. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20 23. So a couple of dozen people already involved in this. And I'm sure more people can jump on in if they want. Um, it'll be fun. Be interesting to listen to some of his tricks of the trade. Probably be uh, castles and crusade stuff to some degree, so expect that, I would believe. Here we go. Let's read this right down here. Being a GM, DM, or CK, castle keeper, is a tricky business. You have to think on the fly, keep people engaged, and lead them down the path to adventure. Whether you are just getting started with GMing or you've been at the table for years, join Stephen, CEO of Troll Lord Games, a gamer for over 40 years, and GM that can keep a game of 20 plus running for tips on how to get started and how to keep it going. There you go. So, Stephen, sort of the Viagra of GMing, giving us all tips on how to keep us going. Looking forward to that. Steve, it's a lot of fun to talk to and, and to listen to. 
later on in the day, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock our time, 6 o'clock mountain, Tim Cask will be uh, sitting around for an hour on the Wizards of the Couch channel, Twitch channel. We've been there. We know where it is. Looks like he's got a good little group of individuals going to listen in. Hopefully he'll tell some new stories. Hopefully most of the people that are joining won't just spur him to tell the same old stories. Some of them are interesting, but I'd like to hear some new stuff, right? Bingaman. Joseph Bingaman. The mind behind Velour Palace of the Disco Emperor, the missing villagers, Ionic Dragons, and Cobrain behind Grove of the Disco Duck is at his first Cobalt Con, ready to answer your questions about gaming, designing, and publishing. What J. Hulk Games has in store for 2020 and beyond, and what he does in his free time. Ask away like it's a Reddit AMA. Keep it clean, people. This is an all-ages event. Fair enough. Discord server. Invites sent to attendees. If possible, we'll simulcast on our Twitch feed as well. Excellent. Um, I may be the only sign-up at this point, but it's early. Uh, there may be other people jumping in on this as we get closer to time. Or maybe just... Joe and I sit around and chat. It's all good by me. It's two hours. wonder how much he's going to get in if I keep talking. Just kidding. I'll be, uh, may wind up just being, uh, me interviewing him. Just asking question after question. I'll think of quite a few, I'm sure. We talked about Alyssa's thing. Let's pop on in. And see what episodic gaming and table storytelling is all about. Join me for an hour of how to develop continuity, heighten theatrical presence, and campaigns in campaigns and worlds that feel real with loads of Q&A. Okay. I'm reading that awkwardly, but Bill looks like he's covering a lot of the bases for... Looks like he's got a couple of dozen people, too. Covering a lot of bases for GMing and the, uh, the broad view um, as far as campaigns are concerned. Keeping campaigns going and keeping them interesting from start to finish. Um, he does imply that he takes a storytelling approach. was a little bit different than what I do. While I might have uh, long-term goals potential long-term goals that people can strive for and thus they create their own long story arcs that way I don't plot things out from scene to scene moment to moment adventure to adventure encounter to encounter I create I tend to personally create mini settings and larger settings that people can jump into and once they've set their goals I flesh a lot more out for that particular campaign. Sometimes on the fly if necessary. People do like to take left turns, don't they? But, for the most part, I let the players dictate what's going on. Now, it may be that he's going to be talking about episodic gaming and table storytelling in a sort of a retroactive sense in that Here's how you take what happened last session, and if you have to improvise something, take these key elements and work them in, which would be valid in any kind of sandbox as a way of uh, approaching, resulting in episodic storytelling um, retrospectively. But, for my money... I'm playing a game. We're playing a game. The story is a byproduct of gaming. When I run games, it's not something that's predetermined. So, it may be that our styles differ. 
We'll find out. I'll be there to listen. I'm not there to um, spound on my style so much as learn about a different style, if that's the case. So, his show, his dough. That's not really a saying, is it? No, not even close. That's okay. Let's have a look at Mendel's... Mendel? Mendel? Well, I don't know much about this individual. Uh, apparently produced a video. In 2017? That's interesting. Early man. Cave geek. Okay. Interesting. 14,000 year old college professor notices that he has finally started showing signs of aging. Meanwhile, four of his students get suspicious of him and start investigating his past. Hmm. Now that is... Vanessa Williams is in it. Okay. Um, mm -mm. These other names aren't popping out as ones I recognize. Brittany Curran, maybe? Well, he was the doctor from Enterprise, Michael Dorn. A couple of old Star Trek individuals. I wonder how much of the rest of this is full. Is it a Canadian production? USA. Uh, hmm, interesting. Maybe we'll ask about that during the uh, during the chat. See if that might come up. Come hang out with Cave Geek on his Twitch channel. And watch his unique process of making a three-dimensional leather map from scratch. We'll put our collective insanity together and create a map from the chat's input. And at the end, we'll do a giveaway. One user will win the original leather one, and two others will win physical prints. Interesting. Everyone participating will get a high-res digital image of it. Pretty neat. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, there's a bunch of us. Oh, he's got his own name in there. So, ten of us in there? Okay. That'll be fun. Let's uh, pop over to his Twitch stream now and just mark it as... Set it up as something to follow. Mm. There we go. He's currently hosting a different art channel. No big deal. Looks like he's got himself quite a nice setup over there. We'll check that out later. You should check it out too. You've got the link over on CobaltCon. But do yourself a favor. It's a couple hours before anything really gets started over there. If you're not doing something today, if you're not doing something today, tomorrow, Sunday, hop on uh, hop on in and uh, become part of it. It's a good time. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. And what you got to lose as they say in the what they got to lose business. So we're closing in on hmm, 35 minutes actually so we passed the half hour mark. I think we can talk more about kind of champions next week sometime or as we get closer. I can do some spoilers on the games I'm running. I'm glad we spoke more about what I'm going to participate in at this weekend's virtual Cobalt Con. Um, Cobalt Con, the one I would have 
love to attend it was a closer convention but can only do so much con going every year and it's pretty far away for me so when you have Gary Con, Nexus and even uh, Game Hole Con all within well less than one's five minutes away another one's about an hour another one's a little over an hour in that order <clears throat> it's hard to plan for much else Game Hole Con or rather um, the Gaming Hoopla which unfortunately was postponed this year too <clears throat> is a lot of fun mainly board games I do that um, we'll see if that becomes a virtual thing as we get closer to August I think was the rescheduled date for now um, haven't heard about Nexus yet that's due up in June I can only imagine that's going to wind up being cancelled or turned virtual so we'll see what happens and we will also uh, find out what happens with Origins and and uh, Gen Con which are both coming up in the summer as well um, Little Wars canceled this year of course the Midwest Historical Miniatures Gaming Society Midwest Chapter Convention Little Wars they're down uh, just west suburbs of Chicago Lombard I think now Pheasant Run maybe um, these are all for me local cons stuff that happens in within a couple of hours of me and there's so much regular weekly gaming con of the lakes one day convention that happens at the VFW hall over in Silver Lake is uh or is it Twin Lakes not sure but right over by there um that has been going a couple of years and has announced that they will not happen physically this year but we'll try to do a virtual convention that's June mid-June so uh, that was one I was not going to attend because my buddy Ken who worked with me would have wanted to attend that one uh, with his daughter and the next weekend I was going to be at Nexus anyway so the fact that they were so close together and the fact that I wanted to not hog all the local conventions when Ken's such a an important part of the first edition community in the area particularly online with his play by post games that he runs highly narrative storytelling type games with lots and lots of players I think he's got a couple of dozen players as part of his in his campaign world and he runs a first edition game at second Sundays at Lake Geneva Games which is our OSR day of the month try to uh, focus on that then although people you know can play stuff anytime provided there's space for it and it isn't interrupting some other big event right um, but we definitely set that day aside each month at Lake Geneva Games for older game systems, OSR, old school, revival, renaissance, whatever you want to use the R for. Um, and he runs a first edition game in the evening on that that I think nine or ten players <laughs> are in. So, you know, kid's a big deal. And uh would like to see him get out to some some of these conventions when they start happening again you know uh, the virtual conventions right up his alley I imagine we'll see how much of that he does I know I'm going to be doing a lot more of it over the next three four five six months maybe longer um, it's probably something I'm going to incorporate into my regular gaming schedule going forward every year um, there's a lot of fun to be had running games playing games online and 
you know you can only do so much gaming but you can always squeeze a little more in so that's what we're doing here all right we're at the 40 minute mark we're gonna shut this down pretty quick here we're gonna look at the schedule going forward for the OK Grognard show Let me repeat, once again, we're seven days a week, but we've moved to 9.30 a.m. Um, the super long board gaming streams that we were doing, we're going to cut those out. Um, they weren't quite living up to what I'd hoped to stream, which would have been more informative, faster games. Um, I think just the transition from face-to-face to... -face to this virtual tabletop uh, proved to be a bit more difficult in some situations uh, and uh, the games were winding up being two and a half, three, three and a half longer sometimes hours uh, for, for board games that if we were playing at a table hour, hour and a half for some of them so um, we're going to cut those out as streams. We're going to replace those with some other things. We're going to jumble some of this schedule around. As you can tell, today, of course, we did this. Yesterday, we did a sort of an update um, explaining how we were dropping these things, the board gaming things and the, um, the reading thing, um, which was just too time intensive on the editing and putting it up. We're going to figure out something else to do with that anchor channel. Um, so, here we are with these four things on the schedule. We'll be adding three more. We may be moving these around a little bit. It may be that what we did today, kind of a con thing and a news thing, would be a better thing to do on a Monday. So that people have at least a few days if there's something that's coming up very quickly. Um, might move cartography and world building to Tuesday, although I want to do some sort of crafty thing. Uh, whether it's a, a craft corner, you know, like uh, painting and terrain building. Maybe we'll do two of those. I don't know. Still figuring it out. We'll keep doing the uh, running review of the various cartoons. We will keep doing the... Uh, a Sunday thing, although that may change. We might incorporate that weekly winner announcement in on the Monday thing. That gives us an extra day to contact whoever won from the previous week. We are going to keep doing the weekly giveaways. So I've got some other things in the work. Thaddeus Moore. Patches, as Hobbs calls him. Jason Hobbs donned him patches that he has patches more has those really nifty old school patches and he has uh, offered up a set of those so we've got the dice set from this week and for next week and the week after that we'll do a set of patches so that'll be fun um, we're still going to do the D&D &D campaign discussion on Wednesday for sure because it'll follow up a Tuesday evening game I run so it's a good time to do it while it's rest in my mind so it looks like Wednesday and Saturday will stay as is. The Sunday thing may move to Monday. The Monday thing may move to Tuesday. Although I may move that to Thursday. I don't know. Still thinking about it. We'll figure it out. In the meantime, it's the OK Grognard Show. Mark CMG Clover, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're on the Twitch channel, always make sure that you have followed. And once you're a follower, make sure to chime in during a stream on the chat because that's how you get automatically added to the list of names and get yourself in for the potential giveaway. Our buddy in Gorgio runs his own channel. Says he can't wait to get back to some more conventions. He's going to the virtual con route right now, but he likes to meet new people. Here's hoping for lucky 
number 100 die set. <laughs> well, there's only six dice set. I originally picked them up, I will say, as uh, potential prizes for a game I was going to run at GaryCon. So when that all got canceled and I had these six sets of dice, I had to figure out something I could do with them. And it just seemed like a great idea to give them away to kick off the giveaways for this channel. And I think so far it's gone well. Well, I want to, again, thank everybody for watching, listening, paying attention, enjoying. Have a good day, and we will catch you tomorrow.